Welcome to the Everyday Royalty Podcast, where our guests share how they are learning to live in the world, but not of the world, and how they're finding Christ-centered life balance as daughters of the King. Join us as we seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and learn how all these things are added to us as well. Here's your host, licensed professional clinical counselor and faith and focus coach, Carrie Kitchen. In this episode of Everyday Royalty, we are honored to have our guest, Dr. Barbara Lowe, share a bit of her story of pain and grief and the things that she has experienced so we can get to the part where she was able to get off the struggle bus and learn how to accept that comfort from God so she could comfort others with what she had been given. So stay tuned. And if you find yourself on the struggle bus today, know that there is hope and there is healing available to you and there is a breakthrough waiting for you. Dr. Barbara is a licensed psychologist, psychological practice founder and owner, a lay minister, somatic experiencing practitioner, EMDR practitioner, board certified life coach, an educator, and a researcher. Stay tuned. Enjoy. Hello and welcome. Today I am so excited to have Dr. Barbara Lowe on the podcast. I had the privilege of being her guest on the Whole Life Podcast, and it is such an honor to be able to share her with those of you who are listening. So I want to tell you something that I love about Dr. Barbara, and I love about her that if you listen to her very long at all, you're going to hear in her voice, in her words, the peace and the love and the compassion that she has received from our Heavenly Father. She beautifully demonstrates Paul's words to the Corinthians, praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all of our troubles so that we may comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves have received from God. So Dr. Barbara, I know that your story hasn't always been comfortable. And I know you've experienced what many would say have been more than your fair share of of grief and pain. And I would just like to invite you today to share some of your story with our listeners. Sure. You know, this morning I was thinking about what I had to do uh, over the day and I asked my husband, I said, can you just listen and not fix anything? And he said, sure. Thank you for the heads up. And I was talking and I'm not normally like, I'm not looking forward to this and this. Oh, of course, that was not the podcast. It was other things. But but what, what I realized as I was talking to him is that I... It was none of that. It was that tomorrow is my stillborn's birthday uh, and death day. And then yesterday was my stepson's birthday, who I'm not in touch with anymore because of the treacherous things that his dad has done. And then in two days or in three days, it'll be my other stepson's birthday, the same situation. So I, it's that, you know, it's the loss uh, and I think it's so important to be present and to, I, th- I think the old me would have been like, oh no, I'm depressed again. I'm feeling depressed again. What's wrong. But now I know to kind of tune in and tune in deeper and just be with what is. And it's funny that you talk about the scripture about comfort today. Cause I've been meditating on that and experiencing that today. And if we don't take the time to kind of step back and be with what is, uh, we, we miss something and we just are, uh, we're just kind of putting what we're feeling on the daily when often the past is present. And for me, I grew up in a very dysfunctional home. My parents split when I was 13 and it was already really dysfunctional because both my parents grew up with, uh, alcoholic parents and, uh, my my mom and my dad either had uh, sexual abuse or uh, attack and molestation in their background, so they were messes. And um, and then they kind of transferred that onto me. <laughs> um, the role I played in my family growing up was the scapegoat. So instead of us calling the problem the problem, I was blamed often. And I do want to say I was not an easy child to raise. I'm strong willed and that strong will has taken me far. So let's hear it for strong willed girls. <laughs> um, but there was, there was abuse. There was a, my mom would wake me up hitting me. Um, my mom would frequently kick me out as a child or a tween in my pajamas and drunken rages. My dad was, um, there were, uh, there was, 
the kind of sexual abuse that I went through was more emotional sexual abuse. My dad really, my dad scared me a lot. He was very scary. And when I went to live with him, he told me that he wasn't my dad. He probably wasn't my dad. And we were sleeping in the same bed and he was very needy of me. And it was very, very confusing as a young adolescent. Mm-hmm. And, um, and then my mom did inappropriate things and t- they both talked about very inappropriate things with me in their mm-hmm. drug and alcohol use. So, um, there was also some, um, really scared, really, really, really scary people in my family doing some bad things. And then when I was told about it, I was told if you tell anyone you'll be killed. And so I grew up with stuff like this going on all the time. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, it, there was a little bit in high school where I was homeless cause my mom had kicked me out in a drunken rage. And so needless to say, I was a hot mess, much more mess than hot when I, at 19, uh, was being dragged by the struggle bus to Christ. (laughs) Um, I had eating disorders. I uh, was out of control with some of my own behavior. I I mean, you name it. Well, I haven't done everything, but there there was a lot of things that I did that were self-destructive. And um, I had been suicidal. Mostly that was about just trying to get my mom to love me because uh, my mom would frequently tell me that she hated me. And so I just wanted that love, you know? So I came to Christ when I was 19 and I, I, there was this wound in my heart, especially with regard to mother love. I thought God couldn't heal. I really, it's like my dad, I wanted to get away from and my mom, I would pine after, Mm -hmm. you know? And, um, I never remember my mom being comfortable in my presence. Like I, even as an adult, when I would go into hug her, she would cringe. Now, let me tell you the end of that, but both my parents died young. Unfortunately, my dad died by suicide, um, about, uh, eight years ago. My mom died by colon cancer about three or four years ago, but the year before they both died, there was this beautiful reconciliation and, uh, God did that. Absolutely. God did that. And that was, that was wonderful. I don't doubt that. I know Mm -hmm. that many of our listeners are going to relate to so many parts of your story. And I, I thank you for being willing to share those painful things, Mm -hmm. but I know that you wouldn't be able to share those if it wasn't for healing. I know that you've experienced Mm -hmm. things in your walk that have brought you to a place of healing. So you can share those and be open about those things without it tearing you apart because those are some pretty heavy things. So can you tell me a little bit about what brought you from, from 19 years old when you came to know the Lord as your savior from that point, how did you get to the point where you found healing? Because sometimes just that initial finding the Lord isn't what automatically gets you there. And I know it doesn't come overnight. So I would love to know how you learned more about your identity in Christ and and how that brought you to where you are now. So you're able to have that comfort and share that with others. Yeah. I've been recording today for a course that we are, uh, we're about to release in about a week called find your happy. And I was, I was thinking about, it's about overcoming depression. And I was thinking about how the Lord heals us and how he takes us how he takes us through different things. And I think that those of us who've been through a lot have an advantage, to be honest, because we're hungrier, we're emptier. Mm -hmm. And that hunger has drawn me to the Lord. I want to encourage the listeners to take that hunger and that emptiness and latch on to the Lord. I mean, like a baby latches on to a breast, latch on and because he made you for it. He made you to latch on and, and, and to begin to drink from him. One of the best things I did, I have a, one of the modules is on uh, spiritual disciplines for overcoming depression. And the reason why that's so important is because I have spent time with the Lord almost every day since 19. I've been in his word. I have prayed. I've learned how to wait on him. I was teaching in my course on how to cuddle with him. Literally, I feel his presence, like I'll cuddle and just be with him. And it's not that I always feel him. And there've been times where I didn't feel him very much at all. And I had to walk by faith. Like, uh, uh, in my adult, 
years, even though I've walked with him, I've uh, married two times very poorly and both times pastor's kids, which is interesting, but they had betrayal in them just like my parents did. And I married outside of peace. I didn't really understand. I was disobeying the Lord at the time. Now I do, but I still own that, that I made bad choices. And, um, and, and I, I married into betrayal. And so there were times where I had to, I was still spending time with the Lord, but not feeling it as much. But for the most part, there's this wonderful, yummy comfort and feeling that he gives me. Um, now, I do want to say that it's so important in the healing process to have these spiritual disciplines and foundations in your life where you're expressing the hunger towards spiritual discipline, like, like praying, like uh, spending time in, in worship like cuddling or waiting on the Lord, spending time in the word, meditating, um, the, the discipline of giving, because when times get hard, when your feelings aren't supporting you, it's going to be harder to do that, but you need to continue to do that to grow and to heal. Now I've applied lots of therapeutic skills and lots of faith. And I love combining faith plus therapy together where science and clinical, the art, clinical art and scripture all marry. And I've been able to do that in my life. And I've found healing both from God's, God's direct word and, and the things he puts in his word, like his people. And I've had church hurt too, but you know, healing does come from his people sometimes. And then also from therapeutic tools, because God puts goodness in the world, just like I can go to the hospital and get my arm in a cast if it's broken. I don't need to worry if that technique is Christian or not. It's just a healing technique that does work. It's mm -hmm. not not Christian. So that. it's uh, faith. Yeah, just pursuing those faith plus therapy tools, and um, and I've actually laid those down in my course. Find I'm not uh, my flagship course, which is Hearts Returning Home. Mm -hmm. All the steps I went through in the healing process. It's ten modules, and it's a very intense cohort based uh, healing course. I love how you blend the faith plus therapy. I mean, as you know, I'm also a therapist and not, not, not the same angle because I'm in counseling and not psychology, but pretty similar. And mm -hmm. I love how beautifully scripture supports the therapy process and how that you can back it up with scripture. You can, you can back it up with, with God's word and how, how perfectly it fits together because we can work with our clients all day long and they can make progress, but until they have that divine intervention part, it's like it, they can't push past that those barriers that that, you, we, that we have the honor of being able to do in the faith part in the in the faith part of that. So I love that you do that, and, and that you're sharing that comfort that you've received with with those who are going through your courses. I think that's absolutely fantastic. So, you know, in my office, I actually on this couch right behind me, I see people sometimes who aren't Christians, obviously, and I use the techniques without the faith part and they heal as well. How much more with Christ? How Absolutely. much more do we have with him? So, uh, but ultimately healing and salvation are two different things. And, you know, we can work on out, outer layers of ourselves and, and even work on some of the inner layers, but that very core is made only just for Jesus. Mm -hmm. And that really brings that alignment to who we were called to be. And that's what I would refer to as that spiritual breakthrough. Like mm -hmm. you can have, you can, you can make all the progress and you can, you can have healing and you can have all these things. But when you keep pushing forward, I, I love how you're saying like that, that desire, that hunger for Christ. Cause scripture talks, Throughout scripture, we, we read about when we seek God's face with our whole heart, we're going to find it. Mm -hmm. When we, when we're seeking that truth, we're going to, the truth is what's going to set us free. And there's a difference in having healing by the standards of we're not drowning in the depression or drowning in the anxiety and all that. And there's like, there's that next level and being yeah. able to say, be able to have that spiritual freedom. And that, that's the part that I love hearing about because I love hearing how people push forward. It does take that very conscious effort to be able to mm -hmm. seek that. And you, you said earlier just about how sometimes when people have gone through a lot of really painful things, they kind of have an advantage because that, that makes us more hungry for it. And I absolutely agree with that because that, I mean, I think that's what scripture is talking about when, when you're looking at how trials are, like, we're supposed to give thanks, we're supposed to be thankful in trials because that's what pushes us toward that. That's what gives us 
the perseverance to keep seeking that. That's what makes us desperate for that. It is when we're desperate that we start to get toward breakthrough. And that's, it's yeah. so incredible to me how that works because when you actually realize those trials are exactly what we need to make us hungry because mm -hmm. we, when we realize that we are, we are the end of ourselves, we can't fix it on our own. There's nothing we can personally do. We have to leave the rest of it in God's hands. And when we're seeking that, yeah. oh, so such amazing things can happen. I just, I, I get chills thinking about it because I know how powerful that is. And I also love that you were referencing the, the spiritual disciplines and, and spending time in prayer and spending time sharpening our sword and scripture and using it as that weapon against the enemy's voice. Because you know, as well as anybody else, that when you have been traumatized, when you've been just exhausted when you've been hurt and betrayed all those things that you're so much more susceptible to the enemy's voice. And when you recognize that and you know what God's truth says, and we can really rely on that and know that that's where we draw our strength. It's such a, it's such a game changer, isn't it? <laughs> oh my gosh. Yes. I love the Lord so much. I really do. You know, people can be moody sometimes and, they, you know, our nervous systems get the best of us sometimes and we can have an edge to our voice or our face and the Lord never does. He, every time he talks to me, it's just so, it's so sweet. I mean, he can even say, oh honey, you're doing that wrong. And it's, it just sounds so good the way he says it. It, it was so great to under, realize that the Holy Spirit's voice has no condemnation in it. Oh, Absolutely. It's always an upward call with him, but that inner critic on the inside and the enemy on the outside, that voice sounds different. That's a judgmental voice. That's a pushing down. That's a not, you're not good enough. You're an imposter. You're an outcast. You're an outsider where God says, you're mine. Mm -hmm. uh, you're my favorite. Everyone else is too, but you're my favorite, you know, and Absolutely. you know, I, his, he's good. He all is good all the time. Yeah. He's the secret ingredient in the sauce. <laughs> I love that. I love that. I think that that voice of condemnation that you just referenced, that is something that so many of us have struggled with from time to time. That voice that says you're not enough that you're, and you're unlovable and you're the reason why these things have happened and it's your fault. And Oh, that's it. I want people to listening to this to really hear that God's voice is not a voice of condemnation. In Romans 8, 1, I believe it says I, that he did not come to condemn the world, but to set us free. That's a totally different view of what is portrayed sometimes because it's not about the guilt and condemnation. He came to set us free. I love that because there's, there's so much, so much power in knowing that if you hear that voice, that is the enemy speaking and you need to draw your sword to rely on what God's truth says and fight back. You don't have to listen to that. That's not God speaking to you. God's voice is like you said, it's a sweet voice and it's something that's going to redirect us. And I, mm -hmm. I always like to highlight the difference between God's approach, which is bringing us to repentance through a godly sorrow so we can have restoration and, and that freedom in him versus the enemy's voice, which is condemning and guilting and all of that. What a, mm -hmm. what a stark difference there is there. And that's something I always like to highlight because so many people struggle with that. And we don't have to, we, we, That's can, right. we are God's daughters. We are daughters of the King and we are loved and how powerful that is to really understand and really grasp the concept of, of our identity in Christ is, is such like, I keep using, using the word powerful thing, but it is such a powerful thing when you mm -hmm. realize, realize who you are. And then when you can look back at all those painful things you've been through and you can see someone else maybe earlier in their journey with some of the similar things that you've experienced. And you say, Oh honey, <laughs> you need yeah. to listen to this. This is something that God taught me and I really want you to hear it. Yes. I love, and I, you, you said, it's funny that I, that I used the, the verse there about God comforting us so we can comfort others. I don't think it's coincidence <laughs> that mm -hmm. that's, that is the exact verse that came to mind when I was talking, where I was thinking about talking to you today because that's exactly how the Holy Spirit works. He paves the way with that. I don't think it's coincidence. I, I love that that's been your meditation verse here today. So. Mm -hmm. I love that nothing is wasted, that nothing is thrown out, that anything that we give to the Lord, no matter how ugly and messy it is, 
including me. I just imagine myself driving up on the struggle bus, like with my <laughs> trying to get out of it, my foot like caught in the door and or <laughs> there's a commercial <laughs> recently with a girl where her backpack gets caught in the door and the, the bus drives off with her still stuck in it. But everything that we give to him, he can turn into a beautiful place. Nothing need be wasted, including our failures, mm -hmm. even my two failed marriages. So everything is used by him that we give him. And now all that is used so that I can help others and, and help others heal. You know, a lot of times my clients don't know my story. The ones in my course or who follow me on social media might, but uh, most of them don't. They don't know where that compassion comes from or some of the understanding. And some of it truly is training. I mean, I've been, I've been very well trained. But also it comes from the Lord turning all that ick around and making it into a beautiful place. And the work is so worth it. When I get to see lives changed and healed, oh, there's nothing, after Jesus, there's nothing better. Absolutely. I 100% agree with that. So I know that many who hear our conversation, they're still on the struggle bus right now. <laughs> and they're still picturing themselves. I'm sure they connected with that image and they can feel themselves there. Was there a point where you felt like you were able to push past that initial barrier there to be able to pull yourself free from the doors of the struggle bus? I mean, because I know that that's, the people get stuck there. It is like whether they're holding on to unforgiveness for themselves or whatever it may be. Do you have any words of wisdom for those women who are maybe trying to push past that, that initial point? Does that make sense? Does the question make sense? Well, I think forgiveness is, is big and working on forgiving. And I still think about that a lot. Recently, I was at the American Association of Christian Counselors World Conference. Um, I got to pr do some presenting there, which I'm very humbled and grateful for. And as I was walking around, I remember the Lord spoke to me and he said, you're, you're, and I felt like I was feeling pretty good. And he, and he just, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and he said, you're still being too hard on yourself. I was like, what? I feel pretty good. And the Lord showed me, no, I want you to live even lighter, like impose upon my goodness. What? That just feels wrong. I was like, Lord, what if I make a mistake? He's like, I'll tell you. I was like, well, I just want to catch it before you have to tell me. <laughs> <laughs> um, so he definitely wants us to live light and free. Now, when I first arrived via the struggle bus, the struggle train, the struggle ship, you know, all the struggle places, <laughs> um, I, I had to learn to feel the feelings of my life and that was hard. And I had to do so without the eating disorders or without alcohol, without drugs, without, um, you know, relationships. And that was hard. I remember crying. Um, I hadn't cried for a long time cause I had gone so numb and so depressed. And then I just couldn't hardly stop crying, especially every time I got into a church service and I would kind of white knuckle it between church services. I went to a few support groups around that time. That was helpful. I worked on forgiveness work. Um, I love uh, the uh, AA's like fourth and fifth step. And I actually have some of that incorporated into my course. So um, forgiveness work, God brought different relationships that were healing along the way. So it was a process. I can't say there was one moment, really. It was, obey it was just obeying as best I knew how. And so sometimes imperfectly every day and pursuing him every day and not perfectly, but just not giving up, continuing. And when I got off, it's like sometimes we get off. It's like we get out of God's car and we go, we veer off onto another highway and we don't feel peace. And then it's not, we don't feel peace until we make our way all the way back. And you will find God's waiting right at the place that he said, what he said last time. And so we get back on and we go forward. So I think, honestly, there hasn't been one moment. There have been many moments, many, many moments. And, you know, just continuing to play the game and not taking my own self out of the game. Even when I've made mistakes, staying in the game. I love how you're saying that, that the daily, like just kind of continuing to seek. I think that is the key when you're continuing to seek, when you, it's like making that decision. It's like, I'm, I'm all in. It may not make sense to me right now, but I have to do this. This is my choice. I choose to be all in and I choose to seek. 
continually and fervently I choose to seek because it, it's not always just like, I, mean, I agree with what you say. Like it's, it's not always just a specific moment for some people. It is for some people it's not, but there is, I, I know I can reference back to a time when I had like a specific breakthrough kind of moment, but it didn't come overnight. It was something that I had been praying daily about. I've been praying, asking God to open my eyes. I've been praying about putting on my spiritual armor and it was a very conscious effort. I would set a reminder in my phone to do it because I, because we get distracted, but it took that, it took that conscious effort and that decision. It's like, I'm not going to let go. It's like Jacob wrestling with the Lord. I'm not going to let go <laughs> until I, until I get this breakthrough, until I get this blessing. Cause I need to understand. I need to have that. I need to have that deeper relationship with you because I cannot do this on my own. But I, I'm, I agree with the, the conscious every day making the decision to stay committed to that journey and to, to seeking That's when we seek, we're going to find, I think we've covered a lot of things that the listeners are going to find very helpful in what they are struggling with. Because like I said, I know that they, they can relate to that picture of being on the struggle bus. They can relate to that. I, I love that's the analogy you use that we've got a lot of people who will be listening to this, who are right there. So I would like to ask you to pray for those women and pray sure. as they are seeking and as they are looking to find those the answers that they need so desperately. Yeah. But I, you just to pray for them. I will. Before I do, I'll throw out one tool that um, was a breakthrough. Um, I just thought of this as we were talking. So praying for those where you have those sticky resentments I made, uh, there was someone I resented and I couldn't get over it. It was pretty strong. Um, she was threatening my family and I made a list of the 10 things I wanted most, like, you know, to be loved, to fulfill my purpose, to have intimacy with the Lord, to have fulfilling relationships, those kind of things. Mm -hmm. Not like fur coat, not that I don't want one of those anyway, but, um, and so I made a list and I put it up in my closet and I prayed for her to have those things at least twice a day. And what happened over time was that my heart really softened, her heart softened as well. And I was really just trying to pray to get rid of the resentment. But what happened was God actually answered my prayers. And so that was a really cool tool. Uh, so yeah. hopefully that will help someone. I'm sure it will. I'm sure it will too. Okay. So I'm going to pray. Lord, I pray for the listeners, God. I pray for those that are struggling, that are on the struggle bus, that are uh, struggling emotionally, struggling with resentment, struggling with your thought life, struggling with uh, behaviors that seem out of control. I pray, Father, for release even now. Now, I pray that right now you would drop that key to kingdom in their spirit, in their spirit right now, that they would know what they would need to do, because it really is listening and obeying, listening and obeying, listening and obeying, listening and obeying, and that's how we get free. And so I pray that you would show them the next thing that you want them to do, because the quicker we obey obey, the quicker we get to the promised land. And I thank you. And for those that don't know that what their promised land is, that you would show them, this is what I have for you. I want you to move forward. This is what I have for you. Pray that you would bring wisdom and insight and revelation to each person listening to see what you have and so that they can have the faith and the strength and the courage to walk toward it. And then whatever God shows you, I want to encourage you, what he has for you is actually greater than that. It's actually better than that. And so trust him. Let him lead you there. I speak blessing over each listener in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I am in agreement with that. Thank you so much. So I yeah. want to make sure any that are listening to this conversation have a chance to find more information about what you're doing, where to find mm -hmm. the courses that you've mentioned. Would you please let them know where to find all of your wonderful resources? I'm happy to. In fact, I have a little a freebie for your listeners. So they can go to drbarbaralow.com. Uh, that's uh, D-R-B-A-R-B-A-R-A-L-O-W-E.com forward slash rejection. And you can download my free book on moving from uh, feeling rejected to confidence. And you could go to uh, drbarbaralow.com to find out, find my courses, find my happy is there, hearts returning home courses there. I also have other freebies and uh, you can follow me at the whole life podcast as well. 
And I highly suggest you do that. I love listening to your podcast and you've got some <laughs> excellent resources. I've been to your site. I've seen some of the things that are there. And I think that you, that God has such a purpose in, in what he's allowed you to go through because you are ministering to so many. And I thank you for letting him use you in that. And I, and I ask that God will bless you abundantly, continue to bless you for the things that, that you are allowing him to do in your life through that pain and through, through the, the difficult things, your difficult time on the struggle bus. I ask that he will let you to continue to bless you because of that. In the name of Jesus. Okay. Thank you so much for being on the show. It was so my pleasure to be here, Carrie. Thank you. Once again, I would like to thank you for joining us for the Everyday Royalty Podcast. I'm so glad you got to join us today. If you are looking for spiritual breakthrough for yourself, go to breakthrough.everydayincredible.net and download my free PDF guide on finding spiritual breakthrough. As you continue through your day, remember that you are royalty and you can walk in that royalty every day.